This video project is part of an environmental impact assessment course and it looks at the human impacts on the Caroni Swamp in Trinidad and Tobago. The Caroni Swamp is the largest mangrove dominated wetland in Trinidad and Tobago. It is situated on the west coast of Trinidad, 3.5 kilometers southwest of the capital city, Port of Spain. It once covered an area of 9,648.4 hectares, inclusive of the Wasa Wastewater Treatment Plant. The estuarine system is comprised of mangrove forest and herbaceous marsh, interrupted by numerous channels and brackish and saline lagoons, and with intertidal mudflats on the seaward side. The Caroni Swamp was designated a Ramsar site of international importance in July 2005. The Caroni Swamp is of great importance as it accounts for over 60% of mangrove area in the country. It also has high ecological value, high economic value, and high social and cultural value. One of the ecological values of the wetland is maintaining biodiversity. The wetland provides a variety of habitats for flora and fauna species and supports a rich biodiversity. It is a highly productive system that provides food, organic production, and protection and is a nursery for marine and freshwater species. The wealth of fauna species includes over 190 species of birds, both resident and migratory, and 24 species of fin fish. Some species are rare and endangered. The most established species of mangroves are the red, black, and white mangroves. The Caroni Swamp is home to Trinidad's national bird, the Scarlet Ibis. Also home to the spectacled caiman, the tricolored heron, the silky ant eater, the crab eating raccoon, and mangrove crabs. Wetlands create primary productivity. Vegetation diversity and age class structure create links to other riparian functions. They have high shelter and forage values, they enhance soil development, and capture and recycle nutrients. They are responsible for recharging aquifers by storing, holding, and slowly releasing water. They maintain surface flows in rivers through storage and slow release, and they maintain a high water table, therefore extending the width of productive riparian areas. Mangroves trap and store sediment, which adds to and builds soil in riparian areas, thereby creating more land. Sediments also aid in the ability of soils to hold and store moisture. They can carry contaminants and nutrients, therefore trapping it and improving water quality. Excess sediments can be harmful to aquatic animals like fish and insects by smothering their breathing and feeding apparatus. They are involved in the building and maintenance of banks and shorelines, where erosion is balanced with bank building therefore reducing the effects of erosion and adding bank and shore elsewhere. They increase stability, resilience and recovery and maintain or restore channel profiles by extending the width of riparian areas through higher water tables. Wetlands are natural water filters and water buffers. They reduce the amount of contaminants, nutrients and pathogens in the water. Nutrients are taken up and absorbed by aquatic plants and filter feeding animals. Sediment trapping improves water quality and enhances the amount of vegetation to perform the filtering and buffering action. Watersheds act as a safety valve storing high waters on floodplains during floods. They reduce flood damage by slowing water and reducing erosion. They slow flood water allowing the absorption and storage of water in underground aquifers. Mangroves play a role in reducing and dissipating energy by reducing water velocity which slows erosion and the transport of sediments. They resist erosion and slow channel and shoreline movement and aid in the capture of sediments. Carbon sequestration is one of the most important functions of mangroves. They slow carbon emissions, thereby reducing global warming and regulating climate change. A variety of commercial species are obtained from the mangrove, including shrimp, tarpon, mangrove oysters, grey snapper, 
and mussels, clams, crabs, and conches. The Carony Swamp also provides social and cultural value through recreation, ecotourism, and spiritual inspiration and appreciation. The Carony Swamp has been impacted by human activities since the early 1900s. In 2005, the wetland spanned an estimated 9,648.4 hectares, but now it only covers an area of 5,996.3 hectares. Dieback of the mangroves has been attributed to construction and development and residential agricultural, industrial, and waste disposal activities. The Caroni Swamp is bounded on the north by the Churchill Roosevelt Highway, on the east by the Uriah Butler Highway, and on the west by the Gulf of Paria. In the interest of agriculture, the Uriah Butler Highway was constructed to connect the Churchill Roosevelt Highway to the southern main road at Chagonas. The construction of the highway partially blocked the free flow of floodwaters of the Caroni River and also impeded the flow of rivers into the wetland. Thereafter, drainage in the swamp could only take place through culverts and under the bridges provided integrally with the new highway. The flow capacity of the Caroni River downstream of the Uriah Butler Highway had to be substantially increased by widening, deepening and straightening the river and dredging the mouth. These activities caused the dieback of mangrove forests in the Caroni Swamp. Within the Ramsar site boundary, as shown by the pink boxes in the diagram, there are privately owned lands, and development of these lands, especially along the Uriah Butler Highway, would further encroach on wetland communities. The Forestry Division is the government agency responsible for management of the Caroni Swamp and they provide game wardens to patrol the swamp in order to discourage poaching. But more recently, private land owners have cleared the wetland and there is encroachment on the eastern boundary from unregulated housing or squatting. Additionally, management of the wetland has become increasingly challenging due to issues of land tenure. The Caroni River Basin is the hydrometric area that encompasses the Caroni Swamp and is situated in the northwestern section of Trinidad and covers about 883.4 square kilometers, equivalent to 22% of the total land surface area of the island. It also represents the most populated part of the country, housing 33% of the national population with a population density of 439 persons per square kilometer, which is higher than the national average. The Caroni River, which is the largest river in Trinidad, along with its associated rivers, drain the northern and central ranges to the west, that is a total catchment area of about 600 square kilometers, and then discharges into the Caroni Swamp. The gently sloping, fertile lands of the northern and central ranges and the non flood plain areas of the Caroni floodplains are used extensively for built development and industrial and agricultural activities. This table shows a description of the agricultural activities occurring in the Caroni River Basin. For example, some of the crops grown include tree crops like mango, citrus, coconut and pawpaw short-term crops like cabbage, lettuce and tomatoes, and root crops like dashing and edos. Some challenges associated with agriculture are hypersaline conditions created when fresh water is redirected from the swamp for irrigation purposes, and pollutants and contaminants also become concentrated in the water, especially during the dry season. As a result of industrial and agricultural activities, the Caroni Swamp receives water polluted with sewage, wastewater from industry, and agricultural runoff containing chemical fertilizers and pesticides. This has affected the quality of the habitat as well as the endangered and commercial species harvested in the swamp. For instance, there was a countrywide ban on mangrove oyster in 1992 because of the threat of cholera. Between 2003 and 2007, Agricultural lands increased by 403.3 hectares and the natural wetland coverage declined by about 346 hectares. 
More than 500 hectares of mango forest on the northern side of the Carney River was reclaimed for the construction of roads, the Betham landfill, the Wasa sewage treatment plant and ponds, and the Betham gardens. Since then, the solid waste landfill in Betham has increased in size since its construction from 47.5 hectares in 1986 to 73.7 hectares in 2007. The Betham landfill is used for dumping dead animals, farm waste and domestic waste like computers, TVs and other electronics and appliances. During an interview, Mr. Ray Brathwaite, the executive director of the Solid Waste Management Company, had this to say concerning the Betham landfill. Any landfill that receives between 500 tons to 700, so we started years ago about 500 average a day, but our local circumstances improved, so we are now nearly about a thousand tons a day going to that landfill of waste. All right. Now, any landfill receiving that kind of waste ought to be a mountain after 30 years. If you go to the landfill, you can virtually see the central place. Where is it going? Well, I guess you're going to tell me. Where is it going? Sinking. Mm -hmm. And if it is sinking, it is going into the swamp. In conclusion, the river basins of small islands are generally not very large in size. Thus, impacts are characterized by a short response time from basin development activities to coastal responses when compared to larger basins as those of South America. This means that wetlands in smaller islands are more sensitive to human activities within their river basin. Management is therefore complicated as most of the impacts on the wetland emanate from outside its boundaries. Thanks for watching.